What it do, everybody? Come on in. What's up, what's up, everyone? Good morning. It's Saturday morning. Um, I don't think I've done a coffee chat on Saturday morning. And guys, I don't even have coffee this morning, which is just not okay. What's up, Ladoris? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Everything looks a little different today. I'm in a hotel room and I am coming live on a Saturday. So I'm going to see how many people actually paid attention to my stories and heard that I was going to be live today and actually jump on. So what's up, what's up? Drop me a um, comment down below. Let me know who is jumping in. If the sound is good, give me a heart party. Let me know it sounds okay. Good morning, Katie. Yes, I know. This is super unusual. I didn't go live yesterday. And um, the reason is because, guys, I am fixing to pick my kids up in an hour. My kiddos will be here. And I am so excited. I have been away from my kids for two weeks. Um, they went to have a visitation with their father. And thank you. And uh, good morning, everyone. So I wasn't able to go live yesterday because we were on the road all day long. Um, it's quite a haul to where we have to go to meet halfway now that we live in Florida. It is a almost three hour longer drive to meet him halfway now for visitation. So we were on the road all day yesterday. So I let you guys know on my stories, I'm going to be live today because I do want to encourage you. Good morning, Haley. Good morning, grandma. You're on here. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I wanted to jump on here. I wanted to give you a quick little word before I go get my kids and then I'm going to have lunch with a friend of mine that I have not seen since our wedding. Um, she was in Brennan and I's wedding and I have not seen her since then. So she lives here in Pensacola. And so I'm going to go hang out with her for a minute, but I wanted to jump on here and I wanted to encourage you. Before we do so, you may not know who I am. The name is Alyssa Holt. Um, we get on here three times a week and do unfiltered coffee chats. It's been a little different the past couple weeks just because I've been doing some traveling. Um, good morning, Sherry. And so I want to jump on today. Um, I've been getting a couple of messages, um, messages from several people and their topic has been the same. And so I want to hit on a topic. Um, if you don't know, I wrote a book called Unfiltered. You guys come on in. We're going to have an unfiltered chat without coffee this morning. So raise your coffee glasses, drop them in the comment bar below if you are ready for a word this morning because I don't have my coffee cup to raise a glass. So you guys raise a glass with me. Um, <laughs> here at hotels, they are not doing coffee right now with all the COVID stuff. They've shut down the coffee bars and stuff. They've shut down breakfast. They shut down all that stuff. So I couldn't run downstairs to get me a coffee. Um, I see the coffee cups, yay. Um, so I've been getting some messages and the topics are all about the fact that people who are reading my book and reading my journey and reading the healing process of restoration, how they, they're they now telling me, um, Alyssa, I didn't know that this was the missing ingredient. I had no idea. I've been carrying around baggage. I've been carrying around wounds. I've been carrying around hurt. I've been carrying around trauma. Um, one lady had messaged me for almost 50 years, guys. 50 years, this lady messaged me. And um, she gave me permission to share a little bit. But she has gone through trauma after trauma after trauma in her life. Um, divorces, deaths. Um, just massive church hurt, massive things that she has carried around for almost 50 years and did not know how to heal. 
If you've been in that situation, maybe not 50 years, but it feels like 50 years, you've carried something around and you don't know how to heal from it. You've had a hard time letting it go. You've had a hard time surrendering it to God. You've had a hard time not having to constantly pick up the weight of that trauma. Give me a heart party. A hashtag me too down below. On, on our unfiltered chats, we're here to celebrate the dirt in our life because I am a firm believer that more of us are sitting in dirt than we are embracing destiny. And so often we celebrate the people who are constantly being seen as walking in destiny and we celebrate them while we sit in our stuff. And we don't know that we have a whole bunch of people right beside us that are in the same place. And I believe that the more that we talk about the dirt, the more that we talk about the things, the more that we bring things out in the open and unfilter them, unfilter the lies that the enemy has tried to tell us about the circumstances in our life, the lies that the enemy has tried to get us to believe about our trauma, about our issues, about all of the stuff we are carrying, then we, when we unfilter those lies and bring the truth of God in, that is when we're going to start seeing people walk in destiny. That's going to be when we start seeing people. What is destiny? You guys comment down below. What do you think destiny is? I want to get a conversation. Um, you still find yourself hurt and angry. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the stuff. We're going to talk about how to finally heal. Um, destiny for me is vision. It is the call of God on your life, as the church world likes to say it. The, the, um, the thing, the purpose that God has placed on your life, the thing that he has called you for, the thing that he wants you to walk in in your life. You know, destiny for me is um, everything the word says we can have. That's what destiny is for you. Everything the word says you can have is available to you, but so many times we don't see people grabbing a hold of it. And I talk about it in my book, Unfiltered. I talk about the fact that as a pastor's kid, um, destiny is future with no hurt or sorrow. Debbie, that's a good answer, but this is what I want to say to that. You can walk in destiny without ever feeling like you're at peace. You can walk in destiny without feeling like you are whole. You can walk in destiny without feeling like pain and sorrow is not totally taken from you. And I say that because th that's the mindset that we take on so many times is that destiny is waiting for us. I need somebody to hear me. So many times people think destiny is waiting for you when you're put together. Destiny is yours when you have it all together. Destiny is yours when you're not in pain anymore. Destiny is yours when you're not dealing with the trauma anymore. Destiny is yours when you finally get over the divorce, when you finally get over the abandonment, when you finally get over the abuse, when you finally get over the sin, when you finally get over the addiction, when you finally get over the thing that has you in bondage in your mind. But that's the problem, guys. This is what I want to talk about today. Destiny can be yours right now. Hashtag right now down below. If you are here for it, if you want to know how it can be yours right now. See, the word says that the promises of God are yes and amen. The word doesn't say that the promise will be yours when you've got it all together. The word never says the promises are yours when you finally get your stuff right. The word never says that you can finally have promise when you stop doing X, Y, and Z. The word says that the moment Jesus died on the cross for our sins and hung there 100% unfiltered, he tore the veil for us to be able to come into the presence of God right now in our dirt and grab a hold of destiny right now. So that's that's what that's the that's the thing that the enemy wants you to do, guys. He wants to get you so caught up on the fact that you can't have promise until you are put together. Do you hear me? And so if you're still in pain, if you're still dealing with stuff, if you've still got these things that are bubbling up inside of you, well, then promise can't be mine. And what the enemy wants to do for you is to keep you in a perpetual state of waiting. Do you hear me? He wants to keep you in a perpetual state of waiting. Your eternal life 
is later, not now. Well, that's not the wor what the Word of God says. The Word of God mentions eternal life so many times, it's ridiculous. And I put it all in my book, the stats of it all in my book. Eternal life was meant to be lived out right here on earth through the Holy Spirit. But so many times we are so fixated on heaven and spiritual gifts and all of these things that we feel like we've got to be put together in order to have promise. But God never said that. God said, come as you are right now. And so here's what I want to present to you today. Um, I was talking about the fact we're talking today about um, information versus invitation. So this is what I want to talk about is the fact that I got this message from this lady and she gave me permission to share a little bit, but she has been in this state of holding on to baggage for almost 50 years, 50 years not being able to heal from abuse, not being able to heal from divorces, not being able to heal from people dying and God not healing them and them being very close family members, like not being able to heal from things that she didn't understand in her life for almost 50 years. And as she was reading my book, she said, Alyssa, you don't understand. She said, this is the first time that I'm finding healing in my life. This is the first time that I am finding myself letting go of the trauma and understanding that destiny is not waiting for me tomorrow, but it is right here, right now. And so I want to talk about this. I want to ask you a question today, and I'm not going to keep you long today. I just want to give you something to chew on. I want to give you something to think about till we meet again on Monday morning. If you don't know who I am, I'm Alyssa Holt. Um, we come on here Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays at 1030 a.m. typically for unfiltered chats. We're talking about real life stuff. We're unfiltering the dirt in our life. And today's unusual. I traveled yesterday, so I wanted to get on here today. But listen to this. You will be a reflection of the God you see. Listen to that. You will be a reflection of the God you see. So how do you see him? How do you see God? Do you see God as being angry at you for the dirt in your life? Do you see God as being mad at you for the stuff you're going through? Do you see God as being somebody who is constantly judging you and criticizing you and pushing your face in the dirt that you are dealing with? Or do you see him as a loving God, a compassionate God, a God who uses the dirt to heal us? Listen to that. He uses the dirt to heal us. Well, how can you say that, Alyssa? Listen to this. In the Bible, time and time again, we see where dirt is used to create and dirt is used to heal. And so many times we see God as the kind of God. And when I say dirt, I mean sin, filth, things that make us feel guilty, things that make us feel filthy, things that make us feel shameful. And we feel like we've got to cover the dirt up. We feel like we've got to shove it under a rug. We feel like we've got to get rid of it. We don't want people to see it in the church because if they see it, they're going to think different of us. They're going to think different of our call. They're going to say, think different of our purpose. They're going to think different of who we are as a person. But time and time again in the word, they you see how God uses dirt to create and to heal. In the beginning, he formed humanity from the dust of the ground and made us in his likeness with dirt with dirt he created us he qualified our dirt before we ever had a chance to become dirty do you hear that he qualified your dirt before he you ever had a chance to become dirty and in my book i like to say it this way destiny was written in your dirt long before you ever had a chance to be clean Listen to that. That can free somebody today because you've been carrying around some guilt. You've been carrying around some shame. You've been carrying around some stuff and you feel like you've got to get clean before destiny can come to pass. But destiny was written in your dirt before you ever had a chance to be clean. He formed us from the dirt of the ground. Jesus used dirt to create mud to put on the blind, guy, the blind man's eyes to heal him. He used dirt and mud to put on the mute man's tongue to help him speak. What if I told you today that the dirt in your life and the mud that you've created on your own can help you see better and can help you speak truth? It did it in the word. Mud and dirt not only created us, but it helped the blind man see and it helped the mute man speak. 
See, you're so worried that the dirt in your life is going to keep you from seeing correctly and speaking correctly the things of God. So you got to get rid of it all. And God's saying, I want to use the dirt to help you see more clearly and speak my word more clearly. I want to use your dirt and mud to help you see that you were created for destiny with the dust of the ground. The dirt in your life doesn't disqualify you. It qualifies you. It qualifies you to create a new destiny for your life. It qualifies you to see my vision more clearly. It qualifies you to speak my words more clearly. The truth of who I am over the lies that the enemy tried to speak over you. Also, Jesus, I remember a story in the word where when the woman who was committing adultery, but naked, standing in a mob full of people, they were fixing to stone her to death for cre for doing this and then catching her in the act of adultery. And he stood in between the woman and the crowd and sat down in the dirt and wrote in the dirt, wrote in the dirt, wrote in the dirt in order to save her life, in order to save her life. And then he looked at her and said, go and sin no more. See, we're so worried about the stuff in our life that will make us look dirty, but it's the very thing that God uses. It's the very thing that God uses. You will be a reflection of the God you see. So how do you see him? If you see him as a God that is constantly trying to stick your face in the dirt, then you're going to constantly stick your own face in the dirt and you're constantly going to stick other people's face in the dirt. You will become a reflection of the God you see. If you see a God who uses the dirt to create man, if you see a God who uses the dirt to help people see more clearly and speak more clearly, then you will be the kind of person that uses these things in your life to show others, look what God can do. Look what God can do. But not only that, you'll be able to have compassion for other people when they're going through mess. You know, see, that's the thing. Can I just talk about that for a second? That's the thing that I think keeps us silent the most is we are so worried about the opinion of other people. We are so worried about the opinion of the church, the opinion of leadership, the opinion of counsel. And don't get me wrong. We need pastors. We need counsel. We need spiritual leadership. God set things in order. You should always have a covering, but so many times we don't talk about the real stuff in our life because we are afraid what the covering is going to think because we're afraid the covering is going to remove their covering from us because of the dirt in our life. And that's where we've got to understand, especially those of us in ministry, when people are coming to us with guilt and shame and dirt and things in their life that are trying to condemn them and keep them from moving towards destiny, we need to realize that it is our job in that moment to cover them all the more. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yet we're constantly trying to cover up our dirt because we're afraid that that dirt is going to keep people from seeing our purpose. What is the God you see? Because you will become a reflection of the God you see. So what I want to just throw at you today is you, who you are known by, who you are known by trumps who, who you are known for. So, so many times we are constantly trying to put on this, what I like to call this mask of um, this filtered mask of perfection, this filtered mask of I've got it together, even when things are falling apart, we don't want people to see it. Um, the first thing I did when I was, you no, know, yesterday, okay, let me just talk about that for a second. I posted a picture sharing with you guys a very vulnerable time in my life when I was 26 years old. I was probably at one of the worst stages of anorexia that I had been at since I was a teenager. I had dealt with anorexia my whole entire pretty much my whole life um since the time I was 14 babe that's that's my I've got my phone propped up on that um and so I had dealt with this this eating disorder this disease and for so long I covered it up I, I covered it up. I didn't talk about it. I didn't let people know I was dealing with it. I remember when I was a teenager, um, people started rumors within the church that I had cancer and that I was dying and um, my parents were keeping it from the church. They were the pastors of the church and um, they couldn't believe that the pastors wouldn't share that with the church because they're just going to let their daughter die of cancer. And, and they saw me twindling away. They, everybody saw me dying, killing myself 
but nobody came to me to help me. Listen to that. Everybody saw me killing myself, but no one came to me to help me. I shared a picture with you guys um, when I was 26 years old yesterday. I shared it with you guys. And um, I was so anorexic. I was so little. I was a size 2-3. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter was two years old. I was skinnier than I had been way back in high school, right? Um, I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and was literally pretty much dying, um, was constantly in and out of hospitals, had so many stomach issues because when I did eat, um, I would throw up because my body was not used to consuming food. So when I did try to eat, my body rejected nutrition. It rejected food. And everybody in the church didn't see this as an issue. They didn't see it as an issue that I never ate at, at church functions. They didn't see it as an issue that I never ate at life groups. They didn't see it as an issue when we went out to dinner with the church and people, I never ate anything. I just got water. They just looked at it as, oh, Alyssa's watching her health. She's so, she's so small after she's had a baby not too long ago. This is awesome. Nobody talked to me about it. And what I'm trying to say is that I didn't want to tell people being in full-time ministry, I am killing myself because I hate myself. I hate the way I look. I hate what I see. I hate my reflection because of all of the internal stuff, all of the internal things. I can't deal with myself. So what I'm going to do is starve myself. And that's the one thing I can do to slowly kill myself and nobody will see it as anything because they'll just see it as Alyssa is just being healthy, right? And I was so worried about what people knew me for that I didn't, I didn't come to think of the fact that who knows me, who knows me, God, trumps what people know me as. He knew the issue that I had. But I was so concerned with not sharing the issue with other people that I didn't get help. And I just want to ask you today, what is it that you are hiding, that you are holding on to? What trauma, what thing, what addiction, what, what issue are you walking through by yourself right now? Because you are so worried about what other people think about you rather than being more worried of what he thinks about you. Because can I tell you what he thinks about you? He thinks you are qualified. He thinks you have purpose. He thinks you had destiny before you ever had a chance to be clean. He thinks that you have absolute promise on your life, that you were called, that you are anointed, that you are appointed, that you are a masterpiece, that you are valuable, that you are loved, that you are worthy, that you are righteous. He thinks all of these things about you. The problem is, is that you are so consumed with the pain that you can't get to promise. So how do we, how do we do that? How do we, how do we let it go? How do we let it go? Cause for so long, I didn't know how to let it go. Can I just tell you that for so long, I didn't know how to move forward for so long. I didn't know how to heal. And I had this lady message me and, um, she said, Alyssa, for the first time in 50 years with reading your book, I am able to heal. I am able to see that God was never punishing me. He was positioning me for more. I am able to see that I may be broken, but the only one who can build me is myself. And it just, it just was like a wow moment for me because all I did was take my story and put it in a book with hopes that it would help people heal because of what Jesus did in my life, because of how he took me through a process. Can I just tell you that your journey is going to be a process? It is not a one size fits all thing. Restoration is not a one size fits all thing. Can I just go ahead and throw that out there? But Jesus is a one size fits all answer. Jesus is a one size fits all answer, but restoration is not a one size fits all thing. How I healed is going to be different from how you heal. How I approached my journey is going to be different from how you approach your journey. How I navigated through my hurts and my issues is going to be different from how you navigate through yours. But Jesus is always the answer. Jesus is always the answer that will never change. My question to you is, how do you see him? Because you will become a reflection of the God you see. Do you see him as somebody who's punishing you? Or do you see him as somebody who's positioning you? If you're there with me, give me a heart party. 
I want to share with you a scripture today in Psalm 139. Um, and I want to talk about this last, I'm just going to throw this out here real quick because we're talking about how, how can we move forward? How can we heal? How can we let go of the trauma, the pain, the issues in order to move forward? Okay. This is the, this is the thing I want to bring to you today. Information is different than invitation. Information is different than invitation. How are you, how are you living your life with the Lord? Are you living it from a stalker standpoint or are you living it from a I'm in relationship with him standpoint? I, I did this sermon once um, years ago called Stalker Zone. And I talked about the fact that so many times we are confused as to why promise isn't something we walk in. Why destiny isn't something we have, why healing isn't something we have, why, why we're not receiving our answers because we have lived our life in stalker zone and we don't realize that we have relationship. And this is what I mean by this. I'm just going to give you a little example. Brandon and I knew each other um, for two or three years, two years before we ever truly talked. We knew of each other. For two years, I followed his ministry. I was married when I found his ministry um, to another man. I was walk watching Real Talk Kim, who did my, if you know Real Talk Kim, give me a heart party. Um, she did my forward on my book. She's great friends of ours. She is an amazing woman of God. And I was watching her and I had been in connection with her ministry and Brandon was at her house. He did ministry with her. He was her worship pastor at the time. And um, I seen him doing worship and I thought, wow, this guy is really good worship leader. So I went and followed him, right? And um, I was on every one of his lives for two years. I was on every one of his services for two years, all of his little talks for two years, every single live he did on Periscope, Facebook, I was on there, right? And I knew of Brandon. I knew of Brandon. I wasn't in relationship with Brandon, but I knew of Brandon. I had a whole lot of information about, about Brandon, but I didn't have an invitation to get to know him, right? And so um, when when our story began to unfold, um, my husband of 10 years, we, we got divorced and my life just kind of took this turn and God began to do restoration in my life and a healing process in my life. And see, Brandon followed me as well. He followed my ministry. He watched me lead worship, all of this stuff. He had information on me, but he didn't have an invitation to truly know me, right? And, um, when we came on, if you know our love story, if you were there that night, give me a, I was there down in the comments below. He was doing a pass the mic on his Facebook and was inviting people on to FaceTime pretty much and sing for the people. And I came on and sang good, good father. And the rest was history. We got each other's numbers that night and we talked every day since then and got married and God is good. But there was a difference between having information and an invitation to get to know him. So here's, here's what I want to say to you. Maybe you're not healing. And I want to throw something hard out there. So get ready. If you're ready, put I'm ready in the comment bar below. Maybe you are not healing from the thing. Maybe you are not moving past the moment in your life that broke you. Maybe you are not moving forward from the hurt. Maybe you are not walking into destiny. Maybe you're not holding on to promise. Not because you don't have information about God. Not because you don't have information about who he is. Not because you don't have information about who you are. Not because you don't have information about all of the stuff God's word says. But because you haven't allowed yourself to give God an invitation to do the work. Information is different than invitation. Are you constantly relying on third party people to get your message to God? It's like, it would be like me having a friend, um, 
a friend with Brandon and being like, I want, I want you to tell Brandon that I said such and such. And then they go tell Brandon and then Brandon tells them a message to tell me, right? And so many times that's what we do with God. We go to our pastors and say, please pray for this circumstance. Please pray for the situation. I need an answer. And we have our pastors pray. And, and if you have a word, please let me know. Pray that, pray for a word concerning me. And then you want them to give you a word because you're doing this third party stalker zone thing with God. God, instead of realizing you have access to a relationship with him yourself. You don't have to have somebody else pray for you concerning your situation so that they can hear from God and come and tell you what you need to do. But so many times we're waiting on somebody else to tell us what to do with our own brokenness. We're waiting for other spiritual leaderships in our life and pastors and worship pastors and mentors to tell us what it is we need to do, not realizing that you don't have to be a third party stalker zone type of person who has all the information about God, but doesn't give him the invitation to have relationships relationship with you personally. The word says that any man who is inflicted, let him pray, let him pray. But we are so busy about getting other people to pray for our stuff that we don't ever truly invite God into our stuff ourselves. I want to read you a um, scripture and then I'm going to jump off here because I got to get ready to go pick up my kiddos. But in Psalm 139, David is talking about all the information that God has about us. He has so much information about us. And maybe, maybe that's your problem right there. Maybe you feel like, well, God knows all of the stuff in my life. Why isn't he doing something about it? He knows all of the trauma. He knows all of the hurt. He knows all of the things I'm holding on to, but he's not doing anything about it. Why doesn't he do anything about it? Because there is a difference between information and invitation. God is not going to force himself on you. He wants to have an invite into your dirt to help you with your dirt, okay? And David is talking in Psalm 139 about all of the stuff that God knows. He has all the information about us that he needs. It says this, Psalm 139, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. We're talking about why we can't heal, why we can't move forward. And I, I'm pre presenting this idea. Maybe you have not moved forward because you haven't invited him into your mess. You think you have, but you're just really relying on the fact that God has information and you haven't truly addressed the fact that you haven't given him an invitation into your stuff. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul and you understand every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to the realm of the dead, you're there. If I fly with wings into shining dawn, you're there. If I fly in the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It is impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me from your, for your presence is everywhere bringing light into my night. David is talking about the fact that God has all the information about us. And this is the question I want to ask is, if he has all the information, then how come we're not healed? If he has all the information, then how come we haven't moved past the broken moment? If he has all the information, then how come we still feel dirty? If he has all the information, then how come we can't move past that thing that has been keeping us in bondage for so many years? And, and, and David keeps on going down. He says, you formed my innermost being, shaped my delicate inside and intricate outside and wove them together in my mother's womb. I thank you for making me so mysteriously complex. He goes through 22 verses. I'm not going to read it all. 22 verses. Go read it. Psalm 139 of all of the information God has about us. The intricate details of even forming us in our mother's womb. He has so much information, yet we're still broken. And this is why I think we are. David ends it with this. He tells God everything that he knows about us, but then he says, God, I invite 
your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Well, why does God have to examine me? And why do I have to invite him if he already knows everything about me? Still, he said, examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Do you not think he already knows everything that's hidden? But David still said, put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on, David said. And lead me back to your glorious, everlasting ways, the path that brings me back to you. David went through 22 verses of all the information God knows. He's saying, God, you know everything about me. You have all the information, but here is my invitation to examine me. Know me inside and out. See if there's any path of pain I'm walking on. Let me know where I need to get myself right. Show me that you're not punishing me. You're repositioning me. Help me build from the brokenness. Show me where it is that I'm holding on that I need to let go of. You may have all the information, God, but here's my invitation. I want you to know me. I want to know you. I want to show up. I want to become unfiltered. This is exactly what God, what David is saying to God. He's saying, unfilter me. Know all of the dirty parts about me. And this is what I want to present to you today. You cannot move forward until you start a movement of being unfiltered in your life. You cannot begin to heal until you take away all of the stuff that is keeping you from really dealing with the things that are hindering you from your destiny. You cannot truly um, let go of the bondage and the places in your life that have kept you there for decades until you start to admit, okay, maybe this isn't God keeping me from moving forward. Maybe I have shackled my own self to this broken place. Maybe I am using these broken pieces as badges. Maybe I am the one not moving forward. Maybe I'm the one that is not allowing God to do a work in my life because I have been trying to neglect these areas for far too long. And now I've got to realize God has all the information, but what he's waiting for is an invitation. And so I just want to encourage you with that this morning. You know, um, this weekend, sit down with God. Take some time. I, I talked about Wednesday that we are human beings, not human doings. That we have to take moments with God to just be. We have to take moments with God to just be. And I want to challenge you this weekend before I see you again on Monday to take time to just be with God, but to also take 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 time to give him an invitation into the areas that you may have felt like for a while he has all the information and still he hasn't healing me he has all the information and still i'm not moving forward he has all the information and still i'm hurting take time this weekend to give him an invitation into those places to truly address those areas and and can i just say it's not always pretty it's not always fun. Sometimes it hurts like hell. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's bloody. Sometimes it's it's just awful. But it's like this. When a surgeon goes in to remove something that is hurting you, it's a messy. It's a bloody. There's a healing process. But once it's healed, you're able to say, wow, I'm so happy I gave the surgeon an invitation to cut my body open and take that thing out. And some, sometimes God's saying, I know that there's a bad, for instance, I had a bad gallbladder that had to be removed. God's saying, I know there's a bad gallbladder in there. There's this issue. There's this, 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 this abuse that needs to be taken out, but I can't go in and take it out until you give me invita an invitation. The surgeon can't just come in and cut on your body until you sign a consent form. And God's saying, I know it's there. The surgeon can know it's there, but they can't do anything about it until you sign a consent form. God's saying, I know that thing is there and I can take it out, but you have to sign a consent form for me to go in and surgically remove that thing. And it's going to hurt. And there's going to be a healing process until that thing is like, completely healed. When I went through surgery, multiple surgeries in my life, there was a healing process after the surgery was done to completely heal, but that thing was removed. The thing was removed, but I still had to go through a healing process. So just because you're giving God an invitation doesn't mean it's going to feel good. But what it does mean is he's going to go in and get rid of the stuff 
and then you're probably going to have to go through a healing process after the thing is removed. It doesn't mean that the thing's still there. See, that's the problem too. We feel like, well, if there's still pain, then the thing's still there. No, my gallbladder was taken out. It's gone. My appendix was taken out. It's gone. But I still had to go through a healing process after the surgery. Do you hear that? So just because you may still be, be dealing with pain after you've given God an invite and he's dealt with the issue doesn't mean that the thing isn't gone. It just means he's taking you through the healing process. He's gotten rid of the root problem so that you can move forward. So I love you guys. Be blessed. I will be back on here Monday. I hope this encouraged you guys. Raise a glass with me. Drop those coffee cups. Celebrate your dirt today because it's worth celebrating. Listen, I want to share with you guys my audiobook, my single Phoenix. It will be out probably next week. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. We've got some fun things releasing next week. The audiobook, my single Phoenix. And my new unfiltered podcast is going down Tuesday. I'm going to be sharing the link for you to subscribe to the channel. Every Tuesday, I will have a new podcast out. We're going to be talking about totally different content on the podcast, deeper content, um, a lot more uh, it's just going to be an interesting, different kind of conversation. I want different content on my podcast than there is here. I don't want to be redundant in sharing the same thing. And so we're going to go into some stuff. You guys have sent me requests of things you want to really hit on, what subjects you would like to dive into, what things you want information on. If you have any ideas about um, a subject you would like to know more about, message me. Um, I'm creating this stuff. And so we have got that ready to go. We're launching it Tuesday. I'm going to be sharing that. You guys subscribe, listen to those. They're going to be great. And um, be on the lookout. Audiobook, My Single Phoenix will be on iTunes and my podcast all hitting next week. So lots of fun things coming your way. I'll be on here Monday to encourage you guys 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm fixing to go see my girls for the first time in two weeks. Yay! I'm so excited. I miss them so much. And um, it's been a long time. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I am praying for you, Melissa. Wow. I am praying for you. I'm praying for your congregation. I'm praying for your families. I'm praying for you guys. Father, I just thank you that you would comfort them, that you would give them wisdom and Help them understand what it is they are to do next. Comfort them in their loss, Father God. Comfort them and show them they are not alone. But also, God, send them somebody to be able to um, feel in the gap for their con congregation and be able to pick up the reins that their pastor has left behind. And, Father, we know that you know all of the plans. You know all of the ways. You know everything before we even see it. So, Lord, I know that you have a plan and purpose, that you are already setting things in place. And we just thank you that it is done now in Jesus' name name. Amen. So thankful you guys have your coffee. <laughs> okay, well, I love you guys. Um, wow. I appreciate you guys too. I love you. I will see you guys Monday. Be watching for all of the exciting um, news that is dropping next week. And I will talk to you guys soon. Be blessed. Share this. Don't forget if you are watching the replay or even right now when I go off of here, click the get notifications and you will get a notification every time I'm live so you don't miss these. And I'm going to enjoy my babies, guys. Love you guys. Bye.